Coming up, we have a look at the college fair, plus your sports and headline regulars. Stay tuned for the GHS Reporter. In a world where students need their news, one news team dares to bring it to you every advisory. With Kevin Thomas, Max Collins, Kate Bender and Sean Engvold, Paige Taylor, Brendan Phillips, Jesse Feynman, Sam Gorenstein, and Mike Mims and Evan Cobb. Live from room 300, you're watching the GHS Reporter. Good morning and welcome to this Monday edition of the GHS Reporter. I'm Kevin Thomas. And I'm Brennan Phillips. Last Thursday, GHS hosted a college fair in the LGI. Jesse Feynman has the story. What's nice about these fairs is, for example, today there are 70 colleges here and kids are exposed to many more schools than they normally would be. So we kind of bring the colleges to the, kit, to the students. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's great, it's very well attended. So um, we're gonna keep them around for a long time. What is the college fair? The college fair is a fair about colleges. Uh, it teaches you about them. Uh, the college fairs where a bunch of representatives from a lot of the colleges come together and basically tell you about what the, their schools offer. And I love it because I'm still kind of undecided about where I'm going to go. Why do you attend the college fair? Um, just to come and see what colleges there are out there and to see where you want to go. Um, the college fair is a good opportunity to see different colleges from this area and to get an idea of maybe where you want to go and what you want to do with your life. What is your first choice for a college? Uh, FAU and Boca and the Army because my brother goes to FAU and I've wanted to join the Army since I was five. Um, I want to go to Hartwick just because I like, the, I like the area. I want to go to Syracuse. That was mine. My first choice is probably going to be Hudson Valley but they don't have that here of course because they have a great nursing program and I'm really into going to be a nurse. Why do you participate in a college fair for high school students? Uh, it provides us with the opportunity to kind of go firsthand and talk to people, see what their interests are, so before they apply, they can kind of give us an idea of where they're coming from. So uh, it just allows us to have a one-on-one -on -one contact rather than just reading an application. Well, Army ROTC is at virtually every major college in the country, and we provide opportunities for kids to go to school uh, tuition-free and also train them uh, in leadership skills to, to be Army officers, but even beyond that, to be leaders in business and industry. Uh, well, I think the main reason to participate is because it gives the student uh, the chance to learn about colleges, and what it also does is it gives us, us the chance to go to students rather than have them come to us. I think it's tremendously beneficial, um, and it's beneficial in a couple different ways. It's beneficial in that um, it gives a student the best opportunity to learn about what academic programs are available to them, not just from one school, but from a variety of schools. And um, the second reason I believe it, it's beneficial is that it gives students options. It educates them on, on their options. Congratulations to the girls varsity soccer team with their 4-1 win over Albany on Saturday. Danielle Tatro led scoring with one goal and two assists. Jenna Krupe, Marissa Cabillos, and Michaela Maybe also recorded a goal. Emily Nagel assisted two of those goals. The girls face undefeated Bethlehem this Wednesday in the next round of the sectionals. The Phillies took a 3-1 lead in the World Series with the 10-2 win over the Rays last night. For the Phillies, pitcher Joe Blanton hit a home run along with Jason Worth and two home runs off the bat of Ryan Howard. Joel Blanton got the win for the Phillies, throwing six innings with seven strikeouts. Game five of the World Series is tonight in Philadelphia, with Cole Hamels pitching for the Phillies and Scott Casimir pitching for the Rays. And in the NFL yesterday, the Saints beat the Chargers in England 37-32. Drew Brees threw for 339 yards and three touchdowns. The Giants beat the Steelers 21-14. Eli Manning threw for 199 yards and one touchdown. While Ben Roethlisberger for the Steelers threw for 189 yards, one touchdown and four interceptions. Tonight, the Colts will play the Chargers versus the Titans in Monday Night Football. That's all for today's sports.
Gossip Girl star Taylor Momsen has been hospitalized due to a throat infection that the star had since Sunday. Dr. Shah Nassari states that this infection is severe and potentially life-threatening. But through tough antibiotics and medications, Momsen is expected to make a full recovery in the next three to five days. Seven and a half years and three kids later, they have decided to call it quits. Madonna and soon-to-be ex-husband Guy Ritchie have announced their split. Madonna and Guy have said that they want the divorce to be quick and quiet. Both sides say that they have not agreed on the settlement yet, but hope to get the divorce finalized by Christmas. That's all for your entertainment news. Recently, in an East Tennessee community, five people died in a fiery car, fiery car crash. Four of the people included four cheerleaders who died just hours after cheering on the high school football team. A sport utility vehicle carrying the cheerleaders collided with an oncoming car late Friday night on a wet, foggy highway in Scott County, shutting down the highway for about eight hours. Investigators believe the SUV hydroplaned on a curve on the two-lane highway, flipped on its side, and crossed the center lane, slamming into the oncoming car. The SUV erupted into flames. This, the Kentucky Supreme Court cleared the way Thursday for the execution of a child killer who asked to be put to, to death so that delays would not drag out the misery for himself and the victim's families. Marco Allen Chapman, 36, could be put to death as early as next month if no future, future appeals are filed. Chapman filed an av affidavit last, last year asking that public defenders not be allowed to file additional appeals because he wants to be executed for the murders of six-year-old Cody Sharon and seven-year-old Shelby Sharon in the north, northern Kentucky town of Warsaw in August of 2002. Judge Roger Crittenden gave attorneys until October 31st to file legal briefs. He set another hearing in the case for November 7th. That's all for your headline news. And with the election only eight days away, make sure to stay tuned for the GHS reporter's stories about it. We'll have stories on the political satire. Well, that's all the time we have for today. I'm Brennan Phillips. And I'm Kevin Thomas. Stay tuned for your announcements. And have a great day.